There's so much company though. So what am I what am I doing? Hit and go live? Yep. Yeah. We're ready. Red eyes. All right, here we go. Five, four, three. <laughs> I think we're on. Hey everybody. Welcome to Get Hooked. It looks like we're up. Um, it is June 14th already, Sam. Isn't that I'm unbelievable? I'm sitting here with Sam Heaton, and we're going to talk about tarpon tonight and um, a couple other things as well. We're going to discuss our – we have some information about our um, our Bimini – I'm sorry, not Bimini, but our West End Bahama trip. And uh, we, we've got a schedule of events coming up for that as well for our meeting. we got a captain's meeting and, and – uh, so, Better take some tuna baits over there. I don't know. We'll talk about that. So, so uh, tonight, before we get started, I guess maybe we'll go ahead and do. We started something last month with uh, sending in photos of fish, and uh, we did get a couple of sh pictures. And uh, then Haley had sent out a thing about registering. If you register, you get a draw. There's a drawing as well. So. We're kind of working out the bugs on this whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and give two hats out tonight. Um, and the, the best picture came in was of the Cobia. Jim, that was a good shot. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have it up behind me, but uh, we'll, put, we'll, we'll put a posting up for it. So I've got one. What, what color do you want? Like gray. Gray? And then Haley drew a, a name off of the... Uh, Haley drew a name from the people who registered, and Keith, your name came out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Golly! So take your hat. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Welcome. You're, wow. you're the luckiest guy in the world. I don't so, ever want to play golf poker with and you. And Sam is wearing one of these hats, and uh, How's it look, guys? one of our salesmen is making them for us with our logo. And I'm going to go ahead and look good. Put, a, put it up to the show on the camera here. And uh, let's see if I can get it so you guys can see the logo. Uh, Gone fishing again. <laughs> so this is delayed on it, so it's hard to see if I was actually got the yeah. hat up to the camera or not. There you go. Hey, not bad. Good deal. For an amateur. So, Sam. Yes. You have been fishing? Yes, I have. Been tarpon fishing. More importantly, you've been catching? Yeah, uh, to be real honest about it, you know, it, it, of course, this moon right now is so big that it's really kind of shut it down. But on the waning moon, is that right? Or the waxing moon? Waning. Waning moon coming moon. full. It oh, was really, waxing. it that's was waxing. That's waxing. That was really good. Uh, you know, a lot of fish in the river, and we. I hey, did we have any of those pictures of the we tarpon? A, we had a technical difficulty. We oh, did we? Sorry okay. About that. Well, I've been catching a lot of small fish, and then there's been some bigger fish on the beach. You know, eighty to one hundred and twenty pounds on the beach. Uh, most of the fish that I've been catching are, you know, anywhere from twenty to forty pounds, and that's the kind I like to catch. Me too. Because. Uh, you, I, I cast artificial for them, and, you know, you can land them, not, not be out, completely yeah. exhausted, and you can land them and not – those big ones fight so hard that a lot of them don't ever make it back. And, you know, I hate that, uh, to kill them for no reason. It's I mean, it's the ocean. I, I understand the predator-prey theory and all that, but – I don't like to see those big ones just floating around waiting for a shark to eat them. I don't like that. Now, you can keep a tarpon if you have a kill tag. But I've seen people in the Caribbean eat them, but I've never eaten any So they put this a $50 tag. $50, right? $50 kill tag. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know why you would keep a tarpon, but I guess there's... Maybe One of the coolest things, though, I ever saw... Roland Martin and I were spending a lot of time in Isla Mirada. We were tarpon fishing. I mean, we were going twice a day, every day, seven days a week. And Roland came up with this idea that we would keep one. 
and we caught about a 120 pounder and we took the scales off of it and I don't I don't think we ate it I know we didn't eat it but we took the scales off of it and we pressed all the scales out made them dried them made them flat and he took it to a y'all correct me if I'm saying this right a calligrapher one of those people that write real fancy a mm-hmm. calligrapher and had his business card, his information put a, on those scales. A scale of a 120 pound. Yeah, it was just, that big. Yeah. So that was one of the coolest things I ever saw. But I'm probably get hate mail over saying it, but <laughs> it was uh, it was really cool, and I thought it was so cool. But the lady charged him about three dollars a scale to write his name and phone number. It's an expensive business so, card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, but but getting back to the fishing, you know, it's been good. Fishing inshore, I wanted to show everybody what I use. This is the rod that I use. This is a Sam Heaton Super Salt. It has a 5,000 Shimano on it with a 30-pound braid line and a 30-pound leader. Now, let me say this. The leader is so important because the tarpon's mouth is so rough. I I will go up to a 60 pound leader, but in clear water, I want to keep that leader as light as I possibly can. And fishing artificial, that fish is not gonna get that bait as deep as he will a live bait. So if you get lucky enough to hook him in the, in the corner of the lip, corner of the mouth, top of the mouth and keep it out of those that what do they call those rough teeth on a fish popo you listening sandpaper <laughs> i can't see you are you sleeping sandpaper <laughs> no it's it's just that rough you know like teeth and they will wear that line in two uh it's uh they also have a gill plate which can cut through the well the gill plate will cut it it'll cut yeah it'll cut through a 100 pound leader but now it's, uh, but this is a, a, a an outfit that I also snook fish with. It's got a good bit of line on it. This is a 5,000. People say, well, that's pretty good size to snook fish with, but I'd rather have too much line than not have enough. The bait I use is a DOA Terrorize. That's what I throw. Dark colors? Dark color. This one has, is a, this is a, uh, oh, what, where is it? All graphics. <laughs> this is a, a brim. This is a root beer glitter. And I've got some brims in here, if I can find one. But a lot of times, if you'll notice, I have actually spray painted some black on the head of that thing and two toned it. I don't know. I just. Maybe it's just superstition or, or whatever, but I like that. I think he can zero in on that head of that bait better. And I, I throw it out there. Well, let me hook you, Jerry. No. I don't want to catch no catfish. <laughs> and uh, I throw it out there, and I try to throw it right in the hole where the fish roll. And I just I, I, I engage my reel. And I just hold it real still and let it sink slow, 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 slow. That's a that is a quarter ounce head, so it's going to slink, slink. <laughs> it's going to sink pretty slow. That's what I want it to do. The only drawback <clears throat> to that quarter ounce head is you can't throw it as far as you can a three eighths ounce head. Now the th- if if I mean I'll fish a three eighths because I can get so much more range with it. And if the if the if they're coming up away from the boat, and a lot of times, especially if you catch one, if you catch one out of that school that's surfacing, they're gonna continue to back away from that boat. So I'll go to a three eighths ounce head and I'll go even to a twenty pound test braid so I can I'm going to catch that thing. So I can throw it further. 
Okay. Now, the fish tend to hit it when it's sinking, right? The fish hit it when it's sinking. But that three-eighths ounce bait will sink a lot faster than that quarter ounce bait will. What line did you say you have on there? This is 30, but I will go to 20. Well, I, I see two knots, so you have three types of lines. Well, that's there? a bimini twist. The first knot so right here. Double the braid, double the braid, and then double the braid, and you can tie it onto your. And then this is a fisherman's no name knot. I don't know really what it is. It's kind of a uh, ha half huff nagel, and and it's not a full huff nagel, but it's a half huff nagel. The reason I don't tie a full huff nagel is it takes too darn long, but <laughs> but it that bait will produce. When, you know, now I've caught them on topwater baits. I've caught them on shrimp. Uh, I love a topwater bait because it's more exciting. The strike's a lot more exciting. And then you can go to a heavier leader. I'll go to a 50 or 60 pound leader on a topwater bait because he's not going to pay any attention to that leader. Now, there's a phrase out there. Everybody says, bow to the king, bow to the king. When the fish jumps, you bow to him. Fish jumps, you bow to him. Does anybody know why you bow to him? Popo, you can't answer that. <laughs> I just learned it. It's my newsletter. Yeah. It doesn't land on the line. It cut the line. That's exactly if right. If it does Break land, the line. It, it's not taut, so if, it won't pop it, it. it. It's not tight, and he can't cut it. You can pull on this braid all you want to, and you can't pull it in two. But you can pull on it, just barely pull on it, and touch it with a knife blade, and it has no shear strength. I mean, I was there when we made the first foot of spider wire in Coronado, California, with Safari Land. It has great tensile strength, it has great knot strength, but it has no shear strength. It just has no shear strength. So that's the reason that you bow to that fish to keep him from landing on that line, and any one of those scales on his body can cut that line in half. But, uh, and uh, if you go fishing tomorrow with me, and we're tarpon fishing, I'm gonna have this rig right here, real close by. So, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do to increase your chances. And you need to do everything you can to increase your chance of catching that tarpon. Because, in my opinion, they're the sportiest fish in them. I, I mean, think they're the most fun to catch, especially up to 50 pounds. Oh, yeah, up to 50 pounds. So on the beach, um, when you're fishing, obviously, I guess there's some, there's some etiquette out there, right? When these pods of tarpon are swimming up and down the beach? Yes, there's a lot of fishing etiquette. There's a lot of fishing etiquette, and it's according to who's on the fish. If, and what I mean by that is, you know, everybody thinks you ought to, you can't chase them down. I mean, you can't, if, like Bill, it was Bill Curtis, who was an old time Biscayne Bay guide. We were fly fishing for tarpon one day, and I threw it out there, got it back in, threw it out there, got it back in, and Bill looked at me. He was standing on the top of a 65-horsepower Evinrude outboard motor. <laughs> that was his polling platform, standing on the top of that thing. He said, Sam, they don't eat with their ass. <laughs> I guess we'll be monitored on that, too, but they don't eat with their ass, and he's very true. you got to get that bait in front of that fish. So what you want to do, if this school of fish it's coming up the beach. You want to take that boat and get around in front of them and get far enough in front of them so that you, you don't spook them and you can throw at them, how can I say this, at a 45-degree angle and bring it in front of that school. Don't throw right down in that school like that. Don't do that. If the school's right here and you're right here, you want to throw this way and bring it in front of those fish. That makes sense? Now that's with live bait or artificial. Now, this is 40 pound braid, 
right here. 40 pound braid and this is 50 pound leader. The reason I go a little bit heavier is because nine times out of 10, when I'm using this rig right here, I'm using live bait. Now, greenies, not my favorite. Pilchers, I like them. Scale sardines, I like them. Mullet, I like them if they don't swim too hard. If you take a big old horse mullet like that, he's going to swim. He, he darn near out swim a tarpon. But, so what I do, I want me a, a mullet about seven six, inches, six, eight, seven inches. six, seven inches, eight inches. I want him out there where that fish can look at. Now, if I get some of them big horse mullet, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them, I, I cut their tail, but I'll cut their heads off, stomp their head, and put a hook in it. And they'll eat it up on the bottom. I catch just as many, right down here at the crossroads, I'll catch just as many on a mullet head as I will a live bait. Why don't you like greens? I just don't think the tarpon like them that much. I don't have a thing against greenies, but... I don't think the tarpon like them as much as that mullet. You know, if I was going to guess, make a fisherman's guess, and BS everybody, I'd say they're a little too oily for tarpon. Oh. What, about what about croakers? Croakers are great. If you can get a croaker about like that. Hook and them great the old big croakers. Hook them in the tail so they start swimming down. Hook them in the back. I hook them in the, in the, in the uh, dorsal fin, behind the, behind the dorsal fin. Behind the dorsal. Yeah. But now, the thing about that is, if you start throwing him out and winding him in, throw him out and wind him in, you're going to kill him. Right. You know, so you got to be set up pretty good and throw it out there and leave it. And I will use a float. I will use a float. Doggone it, I forgot to bring one. I, I, if I can find them, I want a natural cork float about the size of a silver dollar in diameter. Is that right? Diameter? <laughs> Yeah, Close this one is going to be a little bit small because <laughs> if that gets very far from me, I can't see it. <laughs> but it's a float. <laughs> this one I like because it's weighted. It has a weight on the bottom of it, but that's a little bit small. But I want one about that. I want one in cork balls about that big around. And I don't know. They just seem to hit that cork better than they do the rest of them. Now, that cork's hard to find. You know, you'll see a lot of the old time guys down in Isla Mirada, Florida, fishing them round cork balls. I've always had the luck with the sardines, either the sardines or mm -hmm. the poor mullet, finger mullet, not mm -hmm. a little bit bigger than finger mullet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we down in the Keys, we use pinfish. Yeah, pinfish are good. Pinfish, it's. I'm not gonna say a crab is great. If you can get a pass crab about that big around and and tarpon fish with him, but now, let me say this. A pass crab can't swim very hard. So if you've got a bunch of tide, like going through the bridge or something like that, that crab's going to stay on top pretty much all the time. I will take a one-ounce egg sinker and, and rig a what they call a, a fish finder rig where I put the I put the weight above the hook mm -hmm. about three or four feet swivel bead and weight and that way that weight lay on the bottom and it'll keep him down a little bit I don't know I, I just feel like you know they eat on the bottom all their life and we fish for them on top and it's kind of backwards. What's your experience with shrimp? Shrimp, everything will eat a shrimp if you can find some big enough. Okay. That's the only thing is finding a big enough shrimp to entice that big old tarpon to, to eat it. I have no problem with a shrimp, but I want a shrimp, you know, a 12 count. Gotcha. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jackson, my fault. You're in prawn territory. <laughs> you know, a lot of times it comes down to a lot of times it comes down to the time of year, right? And what's what's out there, right? What baits out there? You get the mullet, the mullet run. They're they're eating mullet. You know, when when you know this time of year, you're getting schools of you know you're seeing sardines and we're seeing greenies. I prefer the sardines. I'm going to use a sardine over a mullet or over anything else if I'm doing live bait. You know, I'm going to go and, like Sam says, the crossroads, you can you can get out there when there's, you know, on a weekday when there's not a lot of traffic, and those fish will swim right up in with that tide. They come right in, and and they're swimming in that tide. You, you can sit and you can wait for them. You can drift with them, or, you know, I've done that with my kids just coming back from the sandbar one day. Just said, well, let's try it, you know, and 10 minutes we had a fish on. Um, they're there. You know, you, you just you don't have to see them all the time. They're they're always swimming out there. I go up in the North Fork. Have you ever fished for them up there? Sure, sure. Um, I like to I like to throw like um, bone colored, um, you know, uh, husky jerks like the Rapalas. Yeah. What about is, is there a spook? Or is it? Well, you do the spooks on early light or low yeah. light, right? I like a Zara spook for them. We caught them under the bridge, right down here, three years ago. And they would come up every morning right at daylight, and we would just absolutely smack them yep. on, a, on a white, a the, bone-colored Zara There's spook. the resident talking up in the South Fork. I live off of the South Fork, and DOA terrorized. It's the best bait up there, mm -hmm. the best bait. And, and, you know, it's like Sam said, you can get away with using a lighter, a little bit lighter gear, 4,000, 5,000, and... Um, you know, they're not real giant, big tarpon up there. And there are some big ones up there, but, you know, most of the ones you're going to catch. This Crowder Rod right here is uh, my favorite tarpon rod. It's an 8-foot, 30-pound. Uh, and uh, that's a Okuma reel. Yeah, it's not Avenger. my favorite, but it's all I can afford. No, it's not. It's not my favorite, but... That's what I got it's a, right it's now. A, it's a bait runner program. It's a bait runner program. But now, let me tell you this. We caught some dolphin last week. We, we caught some pretty nice dolphin. And the way I was catching them, I wasn't using the bait runner. I was throwing that bait out there, and I could see those, those mahi swim behind the boat real fast like a green streak in the water. And what I did is I backed my drag off, we're using circle hooks, backed my drag off, did not use the bait runner, and let them hook their self. And that was more productive. I mean, I caught four, and the guy with me caught one. Because they just, I don't know, they, they, they were, they had hit his, and run with it, but as the bait runner was going off, they'd drop it and spit it out. So, but uh, tarpon, you usually, I'm going to tell you one thing we did use in Isla Morada right there at uh, Channel 2 is uh, dolphin bellies. Y'all ever use dolphin bellies? Popo, you ever use a dolphin belly? No. I've yeah. I've heard about it, but... They call you, the local guys down there call you fun, real ugly names when you use those because they're training them to, you, they say you're training them to hit dolphin bellies and they won't hit nothing else. Huh. But I, I really, May is, yes, sir. Uh, do you want, I have two questions. you want me to wait until you're done or? No. Nah. One of them is when you mentioned that you just tie a bimini and yes, then sir. you go into your leader. Yes, sir. Would you ever consider just, doing the loop to loop so like you know they have the the, the loop leaders already made 20 30 pound type of thing i don't Could use it be them. easier to go through the guides and all that i don't use them okay right. now what's the purpose of the bimini twist to give you two lines <clears throat> so i do on mine with my braid i don't do the bimini twist i i, I it's a lot easier to tie the um fg the fg or what else uni, the, double uni no there's um What's the one that's, it's it's a double line knot. Alberto. And you basically like you wrap, wrap it around, around and it's yeah. a quick knot and it's 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 90% or whatever. I mean, when you're talking about braid, I mean. But that 
I mean, what does that foot of double line do for you? I, I just don't comment. It gives you two lines. If he cuts one line or you break one line or something, you got another line on there. Would a longer leader do the same thing? No. Well. I mean, people use them, and they've been around 100 years. The, the have y'all ever tied a long leader on your rod? And it's hard to cast. When you get it to the tip, it hangs the tip. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you have to try to alley oop the thing because you, your leader's too long. Yep. I'm going to tell you about that. I had a guy out there one day and we were catching beneath. Spider hitch is the one I tried. Spider hitch, yeah. yeah. I don't like a spider hitch, but you know, that's what makes fishermen fishermen. Different techniques. For me, for the lighter stuff, it's easy to tie. Yeah. When I'm doing offshore, I do a bimini. Yeah. But uh, so we were out there catching Bonita, schooling Bonita. I mean, they were schooling like everywhere. And he had a, a, a his girlfriend with him. She was a nice looking lady and she was in a little bikini. And I was helping her a lot, you know, paying attention, <laughs> make sure she caught some fish. Keeping her balanced. Yeah, keeping it. Well, I'm trying to keep my hands off of her. Lisa, delete that. But <laughs> my wife. <laughs> but so he ties on a, he's got a hook, ties a grainy on, or puts a grainy on the hook. And that thing, like he did, he tries to alley oop it and he throws it and the greeny comes off, and the hook goes right in his nose and out the nose up there. He turned around and looked at me, and I said, wow. He said, can you cut this? I said, also, I ain't got nothing big enough to cut that double, double X strong hook into. About like us that day when you cut that one out of my foot. So I just slipped the line on it, and I said, just pretend that I ain't even there. <laughs> and, and he fished the rest of the day. He, I guess they went to the emergency room or someplace and had it took out. It's become popular. People have nose rings today. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me. Already set up. I got a, I, my nose has been mashed a lot, but not no holes yeah. in it. <laughs> my follow up was we were alluding yeah. to um, earlier before was the beach etiquette for boating. Mm -hmm. um, and you're coming around to sit there rather than obviously go through a school, you don't want to put them down, you don't want to spook them all, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. But once you're sitting there and you're that guy that, that made it to the position, is there another, is there more etiquette to follow? Like, no, then it's just you don't pull in on his fish. You go up above him or below like him or whatever it is, and you set up and what? Gosh, okay. That's beach etiquette. Yes, but sure now, right. let me tell you about that. Uh -oh. That's kind of like, I don't know how to make a comparison there. Some people got beach etiquette and some people don't. But so those fish are gonna keep swimming. Yeah. They're swimming typically this time of year, they're swimming north, right? Can I yeah. they, I'm sorry, I just don't know that much about it, and that's why I'm here to try to learn. Sure, that's the reason I'm here. With with the trolling motor, is this, is that able to keep up with them swimming? You can use the trolling motor to possession your boat, but you can't use the trolling motor to catch them. You're not going to keep up with the school no. a little faster than trolling. No. Yeah. Okay. You can use the trolling motor to position okay. your boat, gotcha. but you can't run them down with. It. Some people don't like. They some people think that the trolling motor they they actually don't like the sound of it. And it's possible if it cavitates or something like that. But I mean, you try to be quiet because if you get your line right and you see those fish coming, it gets exciting because you know they're coming. And sometimes mm -hmm. you only have one or two shots at them, mm -hmm. especially if you're throwing. You know, if you're throwing an artificial, you may only get a couple casts out of it. If you got a live bait out there, hopefully they'll see it. You know, you got it swimming in the right place. And try to anticipate their path and throw your bait before they get there. Don't throw it right in front of them. Because, you know, just try to get it in front of them. Because they'll, if, like Tony said, if, you know, they're a class A super predator. And they're gonna they make a living with their eyeballs. Catch it, Jerry. That's pretty quick for an old man. Yeah, that's, and that's you know, the beach is uh 
you know, it's it's fun to fish for them, especially when they're when they're eating, when they're hungry. You know, yeah. and they're frustrating too because a lot of times you'll see them and they're rolling, you know, and they're they're doing their thing and they're moving. But you know, I found that sometimes when they're moving pretty at a good clip, they're not eating; they're just mm-hmm. moving. So you, they're they're hard to, you know, you they're get hard them daisy chain, and that's what you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> but up in the river now, when we when I fish up, you know, either in the North Fork or up in the South Fork when they're up there. Mostly, they're there most of the summer. Um, you know, the water's a little darker. You can get a little closer to them. You know, and, and especially in the South Fork, it's a little narrower. Uh, there's some great areas there, you know, where there's entries, there's canal entries where they hang around. Um, so it's it's worth it. If you guys haven't tried to go up that way and, and fish for them, they're up there. Um, in your experience with the beach fishing uh, of it, aspect of it is it a morning bite and an afternoon bite mostly tarpon in general time? tarpon in general are low light feeders okay. but but i've caught them in the middle of i've caught them and hooked them in the middle of the day but so you can't see them at night doing down the beach right yeah you can see it, but the early morning bites the best gotcha. yeah and and a lot of times right at right at the mouth of the inlet on the right tide um, it's Fort Pierce Inlet. I've seen them there. I love fishing there for them. They're usually there. Um, our inlet here. I like fishing the inlet here in the evening. It's less traffic, and if you're out there, you know, right at, right as the sun's dropping, the lights getting low, they're out there. Um, you just got to know where you're where you're at out there. Know what you're doing. Yeah. It's been showing up. You notice the sand's different out there. Yeah, the drains it up off the bottom. They're right, they're right there by. Uh, by the sandbar on the inside where that where um, that, well the sand's moving around a bit. I mean, that, that's where they're keeping the dredge and they got a, they got a big pipe laying there. We're over there Monday. They yeah. got a big pipe laying there that they're pulling from some from there too. Yeah. They're putting it on the uh, state park beach. So which okay. I think is a mistake. I got some some scientific information on the tarpon. Okay. Atlanticus you know, Galapagos. It's Megalops Atlanticus. You're okay, close. have a close. <laughs> There is back there. There is a um, an Indo Pacific tarpon, mm-hmm. so uh, it's you know eastern coast of Africa up through the Indian uh, Ocean. Um, it's a megalops also, but it's something terrorist or something. Um, they can they can basically live in water that almost has no oxygen. They they have a bladder that um, if you see them roll, and a lot of times if you watch tarpon and just watch their behavior, they roll and then blow out some bubbles as they go down. Um, they can use that bladder to, as a breather, so they can, as a respiratory organ. So they, they, they use the bladder as a, as a, you know, it's a buoyancy bladder, but they also can use it in low, low oxygen water. And you'll see them roll a lot more, especially young tarpon. You know, you'll see them in some of these ponds, and they roll a lot. And that's kind of the, the water might have low oxygen, so they're they're breathing. It's pretty cool. They they they've been around. They found their their uh, you know fossils of up to 113 million years old in Cretaceous period. So they've been around a long time, mm. almost as long as you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. uh, so they can lay a, 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 a single female, 12 million eggs. Mm. I can't relate to that. So, and, and, okay, do you know the ideal water temp? That's my last thing. The ideal water temperature for tarpon? Yep. 76 degrees. That's in the middle, 72 to 82. So pretty much right I there. mean, I ain't no scientist, but they, I sure have been out there a lot. They get real lethargic at 60 degrees, like yeah. snook too. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I... I I really enjoy fishing for tarpon. I think they're a great fish. Uh, there's a, a lot of different ways to fish for them, a lot of different baits you can use. I use a DOA shrimp a lot of the times because it falls really slow, you know. And de- But I want to talk a little bit about fly fishing. Fly fishing for them. You have fly fishers in here? Anybody? Nobody. John? Big guy. I do. I like nothing smaller than a ten weight, even for the small ones. I like nothing smaller than a ten weight. I'm gonna use it. I don't tie the IGFA uh, leader links. I don't do that. I use a straight 
I like at least a 40 pound cord in my fly line. I want an intermediate sinking line so that it will sink down in front of that fish. <clears throat> I like a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and I like, I really like a 60 pound tipping. shock tipping. But I will go a lot lighter than that. I will go down to like a 40 pound tip. So, and here again, my problem is that I, I have these guys. Is anybody in here endorsed by Orvis? Good. I see these guys on the, you know, on the front of the boat. Son, you got to throw the damn thing, or they're going to be gone. I mean, you know. So, it, it, what you got to practice, you got to practice one false cast and shoot it right to where you want. Double haul? Yes, double haul. Yeah. I like to do that too. You got to be quick. You got to be quick. If you're not quick, they're going to swim by you. So, it, it, it's, what, it's not as pretty as, a, as uh, what is that, Lonesome River? What was that? <laughs> Lost River? Yeah, like, yeah, the movie? Yeah, Robert Redford. Robert Redford. What was the name of it? River Runs Through it. River Runs Through It. Thank you, young man. Your mind's still pretty good. River <laughs> Runs Through It. All that's pretty, but I'm telling you, carpet well, those fishing. Those trout are just sitting there anyways. You can yeah. sit there and throw that yeah. line all day, and you float it to them when you're ready. But that tarpon fishing He's swimming. with a fly rod is hand-to-hand -hand combat, buddy. And when you set, when you get a, you throw it out there, shoot it out there, and you strip it, and you strip it, and he hits it, you lock that rod under that arm and do a straight hook set. Do not raise that rod up. Do not raise that rod up. If you raise that rod up, you cannot raise that rod till after the first jump. You strip it, hook him, hold him, and when he jumps, then you can try to get him on the reel. I followed many a tarpon and never got him on the reel, you know, especially the smaller ones. James Cronk, type, this is a purple, uh, what do you call that thing? Purple, purple dog. And he ties them, and James Cronk, he's a local guy here. He ties flies for everybody in the world. He's a, one of the great fly tires. But, uh, you know, you're going to lose some. And if you catch one on a fly, cut it off, hang it up. It's done its job. Keep it. That's what I say. But what do I know? I'm just an old man, right, Popo? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I was just wondering when you're going to take me fly fishing for tarpon. When can you go, Tony? Your problem is not resources. Your problem is time. That would be true. <laughs> true for a lot of us. It would be a true statement. I saw your picture of your mom and dad anniversary. 60th, yeah. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, happy anniversary, mom and dad. They're still talking to you after you ra after they raised you. Huh? The doors are usually unlocked when I go to the house. Are they still talking to each other? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're getting together for this weekend. Yeah. Father's Day. Hey, he's got a great family. He's got two sons that are really nice guys. Okay, questions. I'm tired we're of talking do, my mouth we're, dry. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to move on real quick to, uh, before we end here, we're going to talk a little bit. Who's going to Old Bahama Bay with us? All right, Joe, um, Jim. Um, we, I have basically, uh, we've got a schedule. We're going to have a captain's meeting on the 14th uh, where we're going to, in the July 14th here and we're if you can't make it we can we'll do a Facebook right Haley Haley's kind of running our logistics on the trip so um, if anybody has questions and they want to reach out what's the best way to get to you just through the website or Haley at onewatermarine.com one you can send in or info at is it info at one water at info at SundanceMarineUSA.com, and that'll come to Haley and I, and, and we can make sure you're, you get answered. Um, the schedule is basically, uh, you know, the, the 21st, 
we'll be meeting right out here at the inlet and then heading over. We've got a free day on the 22nd, a breakfast on the 23rd with a little <coughs> fishing competition. Um, the 22nd is the Friday, right? That's going to be dinner party at the beach, the all all white party. Are you going with us? No, no nobody's invited me. That's <laughs> Haley. I I I I I'm a You have time. So um, no resources. We're gonna. <laughs> so there's some paperwork that we'll go over with everybody as well about you know, um, you know the customs so uh it's it's not a it's not a process but you know you got to do a few things like you got to get tested i believe it's a covid test you got to have negative tests within 72 hours um how much time do you have to have on your passport before you clear in like six months left in your pass before it oh, expires yeah. is it six months well you can get but they don't like it well, I don't know why they, they make a date and then tell you it's no good for six months before it. It's stupid. Make it the date. <clears throat> I think they kind of set a they set it as a standard, and you know, I mean, it's you can still even use it. I've I've had this come up with my passport. I used to live overseas. I lived in Europe, and um, I've actually had to get four pages in my book because of all the stamps and all that but it's you know you you can you can actually go beyond that date that that's six months and it's just a matter of they don't like they don't like that because they don't know what your timing is how long you stay in and all that so they want to you know they want to make sure it with the bahamas you know they i mean i used to go over there with my driver's license so you know and not now, anymore since, since 9 11 things have changed a little bit but you know i i it's wise to have it updated anyways. If you've got a passport, you know, don't let it expire. You know, just update it. But you do, if, if it's, it's too late now. So if you're within the six months, you know, we can make a phone call. But I don't, I don't think they're going to give you too much of a hard time if you already got your trip planned and all that. But, um, you know, you know if, you're, if, you're, if it's expired, you're, you're out of luck because, you know, you probably won't get it done in time. Um, Unless you drive down to Miami and yeah, you can drive it. to Miami. You can drive down done. there and stand in line. It'll take you all day. You might want to book a hotel and stay down there, but uh, you can get it done. Um, so, anyways, with those those are the things we're going to discuss. Um, Each boat has to have a manifest. Who's on the boat? Yeah, absolutely. You're you're going to have a captain. Do that through click to click. Right, and you, so, there is an app. There is an app too. Click declare is how you get through customs now. Mm. Right there's the there's a there's an app and um, that's where you list everybody their passport number, their firstborn. Mm -hmm. The uh, there's an app called CBP Rome, that's the uh, Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, I'm just I just downloaded it, so I don't know it as you know I haven't gone through it and really learned it but I do understand it's something you can use when you come back uh, it's called uh, CBP Rome uh, and that's the app that's the Border Patrol app but it's the same thing you have to have a captain he's got to have everybody you know on board and when you get over there only one person goes in and checks you in you mm -hmm. take all the passports you go in and, and give them their name, you know, they'll, they'll get a form to fill out. You take everything in and then the, whatever the duty is that you pay. You know now. Do we, do we know how much that is? What, the clear in? Yeah. It used to be $65. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. Yeah, what it is so there's a per person. Is CBP room the one where CB is in board? You can video your people form? I think so. It's, C they, it's they CB. Go, you know what? It's so Charlie Bravo we Papa. We don't like Sam. <laughs> Bring him in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. It's happened before. So if I could share something about coming home, um, I've heard of this in Fort Pierce. I haven't heard of it down here yet, but they are increasing uh, when you use the app. They're increasing the number of inspections, they say. They say we want to inspect you when you get here. 
They're getting boats that are having, one guy had like a half a head of lettuce left over that they didn't use. And you can't bring it to the U.S., but once it's here, you have to have a special, almost like a hazmat crew come down to manifest it, package it, and take it to the proper disposal site. You're stuck there with them on board until they get there, and it's going to cost about $1,100 for that disposal. Make sure you have absolutely no fruit or vegetables on board. When you <coughs> no food, no vegetables. Fruit. 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 Yeah. So nothing, no fresh fruit. Yeah, I guess if you can. Sure can stuff. Like, you know, <clears throat> dried fruit, chips, packages, packaged stuff you can have. Anything you got left over, leave it over there. All right. Um, well, we'll look forward to seeing those people that are going to join us uh, to do the crossing. We'll see them on the 14th uh, for the captain's meeting. And I'll put in a good word for you to see if, you know. <laughs> Well, I gotta get my passport removed. I gotta get a boat. I don't even know what boat I'm riding. Um, so, any other questions on tarpon before we before we close it out? Look, get the selling one. All right, I'm gonna close off our Facebook here and uh, thank you all. Hey, wait, I got something. One thing to say. Y'all send those pictures in. That's right. And we we really want those, and it'll be a lot of fun to look at them. And you don't have to tell us where you caught the fish. You don't have to tell us what you caught him on. Where do you send But them? we would like to have so big pardon? Send them to info at SundanceMarineUSA.com. And then just put Jeff for, just put just, Jensen. No, it's going to come to me and, and oh, Haley. okay. So yeah. we're going to, those, that email is going to come to Haley. Send Hayley. those pictures in. And, and just make sure your name's on it. Make sure it's a good picture. You know, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, it's hard, you know, if it's, if you can't see the fish or you can't see your face or, you know, just. Try to get a good shot. Um, you know, we'll go through them and. and uh, It'll be a lot of fun. And yeah, you know, yeah, especially if you, you know, tarpon. You can't really take them out of the water. If you get a tarpon, leave it in the water, pull its head up, maybe get a shot. You know, with you down by it. Um, you know, and then and that would be cool too. You know, it doesn't have to be out of the water. You know, so yeah. Anything else? As long as his tail's touching the water, you're legal. Oh, make fresh sure insult? you're in it. I sent you that one dolphin. Yeah, make sure you're in the photo. <laughs> so we we'll know it's from. Send them in. It'll be fun. Fresh and salt water? Nope. Just, yeah, fresh fish? water too. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, um, we have some, uh, some boats in stock, so for come by and see us. We, you know, if anybody's looking, send your friends. You know, we do have some, uh, we've got some in-stock boats now, Parker Everglades. Uh, we've got a couple Regals. And uh, we've got our pontoon boats, which we've been selling those as well. So um, come and see us. We'll keep you posted on our, our events. I noticed that Blue Water now has some uh, World Cats in stock. Oh, Ocean Blue. Ocean, Ocean Blue. Blue has some World Cats in stock. I mean, I know that's not you, but it's your sister company. So yeah. I noticed they got some in stock and they're nice looking boats. Yeah, they, they sell World Pursuit Cat. as well.